everyone, JakeFox84 here. Uh, please ignore that voice crack at the start. <laughs> and today we are back with another video. Today we'll be covering DevBlog27 in the continuation of our DevBlog Dissect series. Um, now before we get into it, um, I would like to apologize for the uh, lack of content since the last DevBlog. I've just been really busy with uh, several factors, um, including work, uh, getting ready for school again, uh, family issues and stuff that I I'll, might cover later. And then um, lastly, the um, FCL, or Foxhole Competitive League, which I will discuss again later. Um, later, after I cover everything, we'll kind of do this as a dev blog dissect and then kind of a little micro blog. So, without further ado, uh, we'll get back into it. So, uh, as per usual, I'm just going to read what the devs say and then kind of dissect it um, in case you're new to the, how this series works. Uh, starting off. Feels good. It actually feels good for both of us, so Mark, it feels good doing this, and it feels good. I'm, I'm glad it feels good for you to write it, and it feels good for me to dissect it. Uh, and going into it. It feels good to be, uh, be... It feels great to be writing a dub blog again. Now that our schedule is slowly returning to normal after a very busy launch, for new readers, we do dub blogs and community highlights posts every two weeks, and our dub blogs, we mainly talk about the team, is working on into a features content, Sioux Company 2 Foxhole. In the future updates, our future development schedule has been pushed back at least one cycle due to launch activities, but we believe that uh, supporting new users, fixing critical bugs, and scaling up to handle a larger player population was more important than rushing out to get the next big thing out the door. Their current plan is to do uh, a smaller point two update this week and then shoot for a larger point three content update later this month. Um, as per usual, the disclaimer, um, any, future, uh, any future or piece of content shown here is a work in progress and subject to change in the future. So I'm um, just kind of getting into that. Um, we were supposed to have the, I believe we were supposed to have the APCs and the new map um, last Friday. Um, but like, uh, you know, Mark said, it was really crazy. Um, we'll kind of get a little bit later into why it's been so busy with what we've been so busy with. Uh, when Foxhole launched into early access, it climbed to a peak uh, sim simultaneously player count of over 4,000 within a matter of days. Um, Fun fact, we reached, I believe, when I checked personally, we were 84 in the top 100 uh, most played Steam games at that moment in time, with about 4,300 players. So we did it, guys. We, we cracked the top 100. Um, we only had enough initial server capacity to handle 1,500 players, so we had to work quickly um, to support, uh, work quickly support to support a large population. While there was certainly a little bit of a scramble to find more server hosts and optimize our server browser, there was no big disasters to deal with. All things considered, the game ran rather smoothly when compared to many early access titles. This was a testament to the amount of testing that was done by pre-alpha testers. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we have them to thank for helping shape Foxhole into the experience it is today. Besides scaling up and managing our servers, we've also been uh, busy with a variety of other tasks. Um, throwing my two cents, for by and large, I think the first two or three days, I was it was really bad. Like for me, the game was near unplayable. Uh, that was just on my end. Um, although part of it, I think, now is my internet because every single, every single, every single server, like Steam related server I get onto is like super laggy. So I'm not sure if it's Steam or my internet because like I play games like Albion and my connection is just fine. But then I go play like uh, CSGO, Foxhole, you know, stuff with um, that's through Steam and it's kind of laggy. So I don't know if that's just Steam being funky or just my internet being weird, but I do still get disconnects from the server and pretty bad server lag. Um, that's just on my end. Um, I don't think it's the server themselves because nobody else is really having them from what I've been hearing. So I know it's on my end. So that, that's just my one complaint. So uh, hot fixes and technical supports. Now I didn't cover any of the hot fixes because I, I never cover hot fixes normally because it, it would be no fun. Um, you know, well, let me try to find one. It'd be no fun me doing, oh, let me find one, you know, a text, a piece of text that big, you know, it, it's no fun. So, actually, let me move that back over. What up, there we go. Um, so, we've rolled out eight client fix, hot fixes addressing various issues like server browsing. Just ignore that. Uh, like server browsing, join queues, crashes, and exploits. We've also produced four new server updates that's contained various bugs, fixes. You updated builds are running on most servers now. Um, 
Several team members have spent much of their time providing technical and gameplay support for new players on Steam, Forums, Reddit, and Discord. Um, I believe in regards to team members, uh, like the community helpers, the moderators, um, you know, they've been doing a, a, a huge, you know, a huge uh, service to the community. Um, the devs, when I see them, um, I know they've been busy, so I'm not going to be bashing them. When I see them, they're always super helpful and responsive. Um, you know, it's been real good. And then to just so you know, the what I kind of call the respected, the the old guard, the respected of the old guard. Um, you know, they've been um, really good too on helping people and everything like that. So you know, huge shout out to uh, everybody who's helped the new players and whatnot. Um, moving on to community servers. So since launch, community servers became one of the top player requested features. While we won't uh, fully support, while we won't have uh, support for full player, while we won't have support for fully player hosted servers in the near future, we are taking steps with them um, with our community server tester program. And you know, just to kind of go over this real quick. Um, basically, I'll kind of just cover this real quick. Um, it was initially not a priority for us to support uh, community servers for Foxhole. However, due to the size of the player base, the diversity of the communities that exist, and the demand that we've heard for it, we're going to take uh, some steps towards supporting this. Um, to start, there will be a testing phase for community servers where the Foxhole team will be provisioning servers um, such as uh, providing hardware, installing and running the server, and users will be given access to operate the server such as changing maps, um, setting certain parameters, etc. Eventually, we'll consider releasing the server as a public application so that users can provide their own hardware and have complete control. While we are taking this approach to ensure that server performance is guaranteed initially and for security reasons. Uh, for the initial testing phase, we'll be offering server rentals for free to a select group of communities. If you are part of an existing community, please submit the application below. We'll be selecting communities based on their site and development standing within the Foxhole community in the past. Availability will be extremely limited at first, so do not be discouraged if you do not receive a response. Um, my one gripe about this is he kind of highlighted it, the, the size of the player base and then the standing within the uh, Foxhole community is I think I've been seeing several gaming communities kind of bully the the long existing clans and it's actually been really funny because a uh, little bit short of story here sorry in the FCL this one clan called uh, CIA gaming joined well for many of you who know there's already a CIA clan and they both were colonials and he was trying to get special treatment because I guess they've been running this community for over a decade now. And he, he was getting, you know, we were kind of talking like, who the hell are you? Because to us, the you know, the old guard, you know, the pre-alpha testers, you ain't shit here, you know. CIA, because I'm running, what this was regarding is something I'm running. And I'm like, yeah, you can't keep the name CIA because it was like the brackets were inverted. And so it was CIA. And I was like, yeah, no, you can't do that, mate, because you're going to get confused. So you can go with CIAG, and it's like, no, that's not working. So I was like, long story short, the newer communities that are the shit in other areas, well, you ain't shit here. Because, you know, you don't have that respect yet with everybody, so you, do, you gotta just build on it, you know. Be respectful, please. Not that we're always respectful, but anyways. So I would also like to announce, I'm pretty sure... Uh, for the FCL, we did manage to get a server. From the, what I got from Mark, it sounded like we would get the server. So I am very um, honored to have that. Um, I'm very honored to have the honor bestowed upon us that we have the ability to have get our own uh, custom server. So um, thank you, Mark. Um, we really do appreciate it here in the FCL. For those of you who know what the FCL is, stick around. Um, that's coming soon. Um, hiring. So with the success of Foxhole, we're looking to expand the team to bring even more content and fe uh, features in the future. There were always a lot of extras we wanted to do in Foxhole, like more varied slash flesh out environments, faction specific vehicles, more on that later, and other content. We now intend to use the additional resources we have to make these scenes a reality. Um, so if you do live in the Toronto area and or are um, able to uh, commute, well I'm not and I think it's the Toronto or Ontario um, area in Canada and you are will or you are willing to make the uh, move to um, their office uh, feel free to apply if I'll find the link and pull it up and drop that in the uh, 
in the uh, description box below. Or I think there's these things called iCards. I don't know. I haven't messed with YouTube too much. So I might do that too. I don't know. I'll figure it out, guys. Um, promotion. We've had some very good press coverage at launch, including artic articles excuse me, from IGN, Katoko, PC Gamer, and Rock Paper Shotgun. I like him. Uh, while most of the big launch bus has settled, we're still working on getting Foxwell out there to more streamers and video content creators. Um, I know Baron Von Games did it, and uh, I know that he featured the Pug, or was that Fly Daily? Fly Daily, I think, had Pug with them, and Baron Von Games had the DK with them. Yeah, um, anyways. So yeah, we had some, you know, big YouTubers come in. Um, anyways, moving on to, like, actual content now, um, after 10 minutes of some stories and random stuff. Amphibious Warfare Update. Now, this was originally planned, I think, to believe... Oops. Originally planned to be this Friday, but as I... Uh, at the beginning, uh, that didn't work out. So, getting into it. If you were around before Fox launched into Early Access, then you know that Amphibious Warfare is coming uh, in the form of the landing APC and Farniak Coast, a water-based map, also Normandy... Or Foxhole basically. We initially planned to release this content with the first update after launch, but we altered the schedule. But with the altered schedule, Amphibious Warfare will be postponed by a few more weeks. There will be a silver landing in all of this, though. We will be adding one more piece of unannounced content to this update, so stay tuned for more news on this. Mark, HB, Matt, Adam, Noba, who else am I forgetting? I'm totally not checking Discord to see who's online. Stefan. None of the other devs are online, so if I miss you, I apologize. Make it the Harvester, please. I would really like the Harvester. Now, I'm not saying it needs to be the Harvester, but it needs to be the Harvester. Now, in case I didn't make it clear, make it the Harvester, please. Okay? So, basically, um, I'm, I'm going to assume hopefully by the end of August, although maybe that's too soon. I don't know. Um, it is currently August 14th. This came out like two hours ago while I was at work, so it is August 14th, so figure in two weeks. Yeah, because normally they do the devlog like the Friday before the update. So I'm going to say either this Friday or next Friday maybe, or maybe the 1st of uh, September. Hopefully we have the uh, update. By the way, our start school the 21st, so yeah, there's going to be way less content. Anyways, moving on. Yeah, they definitely look cool. So we do have, um, what's this, the sketch, sketch Fab. We have the 3D model. So we'll be able to play with this real quick. Just kind of give it, ooh. There we go. Um, kind of look, it's, you can't see the treads from the outside anyways, but you can see them on the inside. Well, not the treads. I'm not, I'm no expert on stuff, on this kind of stuff, but... You know, the tires for the treads, I don't know. Uh, you know, you can see them on the inside. Um, this looks kind of funky to me. I, I don't I don't quite know what the purpose is. Um, I'm assuming maybe. I, I have no clue. I mean, obviously the whole point of this panel of armor is to provide um, protection. Um, I'm, I'm kind of looking for a pump system. But I'm not seeing it. Um, I don't think this is going to have any storage slots, or if it does, it's going to be limited to two. Now, a feature that I've been I've seen suggested, which I think would honestly fit perfectly here, especially since you'll be able to see the players, is say each this <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> mm. Whoa, I'm okay, guys. So figure this can hold two, four, six, eight, ten. Roughly, so 12 people with the uh, driver and shotgun. So, say this is going to hold 12 people, okay? We'll say it has 10 storage slots because we won't pa count the passenger and the driver, okay? For each player that is in the back, it loses a storage slot, okay? Which I think would be really cool. Now, and then too, maybe they can do, you know, some basic models where it's like a rifle and some just like kit and stuff. Oh, wait, no, if a player is sitting there, there's just no need to. Okay, but if there's um, the storage slots being used, then I think, you know, it'd be really cool if we saw, like, some rifle and, just, like, some uniforms and some, you know, boxes or something in there to symbolize that, hey, look, this spot is taken. I think that'd be a really cool little neat feature to see. But in terms of what this kind of means to you as a player, um, 
it's going to make maps like Endless Shore harder and trickier to, um, I, it was going to make them easier to take, but I think harder to defend because, you know, if you look at Endless Shore, um, hold on one second, let me pull up a image of Endless Shore one moment, for people. But if you looked at what, en you know, Endless Shore is, hold on, ooh, here one second, uh, load, load, load. Okay, I tend to use Firefox, but um, if you look at Endless Shore, ooh, if you look at Endless Shore, sorry guys, if you look at Endless Shore, right, okay, it's divided into two, two, uh, three, uh, three, uh, why can't I decide, it's really divided into like four sections, okay, you have the main island, right, you have the main island, okay, then you have the Tooth Island, then Salt Brook, okay, and then you have like the rest of the continent, okay, so before, this is really a huge defensive Okay, you can take this as a huge defensive posture. Okay, now with the introduction of the APCs, will this still be allowed? No, and here's why because before you just have to hold, you know, say you just have to hold this little section and then the bridges. Well, now you have to hold the entire riverfront, so it's going to make maps like Endless Shore actually a pain to uh, protect, I think, all the way. But I think what they'll do is they'll only allow it to be whole, uh, to be able to cross in certain parts, okay? And also looking from this, it looks like there will only be six players um, allowed it, so eight in total. So do re ignore my previous statement of 12. Although it looks like this could fit, tw you know, two, four, six, eight, ten, plus them. So it looks like it could fit 12, but... You know, we'll go, we'll go off of what the uh, concept art, well, I, the art is showing, and we'll go with six. Now the bayonet. Now this has been something that's been long requested, um, and we'll kind of get into it. So players have been asking for bayonets since the pre-alpha, and we finally got it around to implementing them. When we were in, when we implemented support for accessory items and fire mo modes with the rifle grenade launcher a short while back. Uh, we knew that the bayonet was going to happen soon since it also utilizes these features. Ooh. The bayonet is a bladed accessory that attaches to the muzzle of the rifle or carbine and is used to perform a long range melee attack. It will be relatively cheap to produce and will be useful when ammo is scarce or in close quarters. It will insta kill any player, unlike the default melee attack, where damage scales with the attacker's health. It will also be balancing. The uh, default melee attack, so it generally does less damage, making the bayonet a far better option. So, as you can see at the bottom there, um, you have a little image of what the uh, bayonet does. Now, what this kind of means to you as a player. First off, it means melee in the game has become far more deadly and useful. It also means you can have bonsai charges. And I'm just saying, if I ever can do it, I'm going to get everybody on a server, get a few guys with an HMG gun, and have the guys with bayonets charge the HMG guns just for kicks and giggles. I think that'd be really cool and epic as a cinematic. But anyways, um, so basically, melee and close quarter combat is going to get improved vastly. I think now with the introduction of the bayonet, I think too, we may also see the introduction of a knife, maybe. Remember, there is, oh wait, no, is never mind. I was gonna say there is an unused weapon slot or inventory slot now. I think there actually still might be an unused inventory slot on your character. So we could maybe see the introduction of a knife as well, which, you know, could cost the same as the bayonet and would be utilized as your fist, but instead of your fist, you just pull out a knife. But so this also means though, if you run into players in course, uh, close quarters and they're out of ammo, well, you better watch out for a bayonet because instead of using their fist, as you can see, this is an insta-kill. So you, you ain't surviving this, so. Um, now, from the looks of it, it will not be a plug bayonet, so do not worry. It's not going to be like the Napoleonic times where uh, you have to, you know, plug the barrel of your uh, muzzle, the plug the barrel of your muzzle. Um, plug the uh, muzzle of your, uh, oh god, plug the plug the muzzle of your musket, there we go, try saying this 10 times fast, um, you know, you're not plugging the barrel, 
uh, to make the weapon where you can't fire it anymore. So um, it will still be, we assume, I assume, uh, fully functioning with the uh, bayonet attached to it. Now, this is my favorite uh, exciting thing. Um, the action-specific half-track concepts. So, I'm just saying, first off, I really hope these aren't ours because they're, um, notice they're lacking an HMG. So, make those the Colonials, please, and make these the Wardens. Thank you. Um, but basically, kind of getting into it. So, in the coming months, we hope to provide more faction-specific designs for vehicles. The first vehicle being uh, looked at is the half-track which we've been dying for it to redo for a while since the existing version strays very far from the current established design principles. Moving forward, we hope to provide unique faction designs for most vehicles in the game. Um, I've also heard rumors that they're going to redo all the weapons as well, um, but I do believe these are just that and they are rumors. Um, obviously, I could see like things like the truck being very similar because I, I think the truck's a very... I don't know, a very universal design. I, you know, I could be completely talking on my ass, but a truck's pretty, you know, I think it's a pretty universal design. It's, it's a truck, you know. But looking at them, they look very good. I mean, they look, the top ones to me kind of look like they'd almost be more of a colonial tank, a colonial half truck, actually, half track. Um, I don't know, it's just that's kind of what it's reminded me of. Um, Although I don't necessarily think I like the openness of the back. Although if the back is open, as half tracks normally would be, um, will this allow them to serve, instead like the landing APCs, just as a um, simply an AP, an armored personnel carrier? Will will this give um, half tracks an added functionality and make them all the more useful? Um, I hope though these do not get approved as there's no HMG on them. Or maybe that we're going to maybe implement two, two versions of a half track. Maybe like a, an assault half track, and then maybe like a transport half track. Um, who knows? Um, so basically, this kind of means nothing yet for you yet as a player. So don't don't worry. Um, and then the last kind of big announcement: um, 140 player servers. This is up by 20 uh, to 100, and uh, from 120 to 140. Um, for a very long time now, players have been asking for an increased player capacity. We're finally taking uh, some small steps towards this, larger server for, towards larger servers, with 140 player support. We'll be rolling this out in the next update on campaign and other select servers. We're excited to see what kind of battles uh, these expanded servers will bring. So basically, it's more players on each side. Um, Fisherman's Row also saw the up, uh, an expansion. I've seen some 80 Fisher player uh, maps. Um, which I thought was very interesting. Um, it's up again by a uh, twenty, uh, ten for each side. Um, so now each side on Fishman Row has forty, and this will mean each side on um, for a normal server such as Endless Shore will have a uh, seventy. So I think really what it allows you is I think commit more people to Logi. At the end of the day, it just means more people for Logi. <laughs> That's the way I see it. More more bodies to throw at the enemy. Um, but yeah, no, I think, you know, this is a step in the right direction to making this, you know, live up to its name of MMO. Because right now, for me, at the current state, this isn't an MMO yet. We're getting there. Um, it's just, in the traditional sense of what an MMO is, we're not there yet. Now, you know, with World Conquest and stuff, you know, we might get there. Um, World Conquest will be uh, a step in the right direction for sure. Now that this is over, you can completely stop watching this because um, I'm gonna just gripe. Oop, I'm gonna gripe real quick. So things I'd like to see uh, coming soon: uh, World Conquest, at least an update on that. How how is it coming along? Um, maybe a second or a third campaign. Um, due to the influx of players, there was servers with 200, 300 queue time uh, queues. You know, now I'm not sure how much of this was the bug and how much of this was actually reality. But, you know, I think maybe having a second campaign would be nice. Um, the third thing I would like to see is the Harvester. And the fourth and last thing would be um, a more expanded, um, a more expanded, um, like, statistics. More expanded statistics. 
So, I mean, this one, obviously, I want to see, you know, this hopefully when the game comes fully out, I would really like to see it, the game with the ability to um, show you, like, how many B-mats mined, commends given out, reprimands received, um, something like that. That's definitely something I would like to see done. Um, also, in the next dev stream, if, if the devs are even watching this, um, can you please show players how to commend? Because I feel really bad for, like, the level 5 corporals I see. Well, not the level 5 corporals, like the level 5 privates I see. I feel really bad for them. Um, so, yeah, that that's that. And, okay, so now kind of for my gripe. Uh, so, the FLC, I talked about, I'm going to talk about this very, very briefly. Um, basically, Clan Wars. Um, 20v20s. The first match is August 19th uh, at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to PM me on Discord. It's in my info box somewhere. Uh, or just, you know, write a comment. Now, hopefully if you're seeing this, this should be out by midnight tonight. Um, I make no promises. Anyways, I've been Jake Fox 84 Thank you for watching.